Now, what if I told you that this bottle would take anywhere between 450 to 600 years to fully decompose? That means that potentially your great, 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 I don't even know how many great grandchildren will be dealing with your plastic. And, and that's really such a shame. So presently, a lot of this plastic ends up in our environment. We litter and pollute the environment with it and it ends up in landfills. Some of it is reused, but only 9% of it ends up being recycled. So today, I want to see if I can make something different. You know, bioplastics. Is it possible to use something like this? Ooh, looks so delicious. And turn it into something like this. So, as usual, we have a little challenge and this is what we're trying to do today. The first thing is figure out, can I make my own bioplastic? The second thing, we need to see how it compares to regular plastic. And finally, we want to see, is this bioplastic actually better for the environment? Nice, but what exactly are bioplastics? Well, as the name suggests, these are plastics that are made from organic starch materials. So that's things like potatoes. You have things like maize and corn. It's just flying everywhere. And things like tubers, like sweet potatoes and uh, arrow roots, which I love having for breakfast. But conventional plastic, this stuff, it's made from fossil fuels. If plastics are made from fossil fuels, they're not biodegradable because of the stability of their carbon chains. Plastic made from starch, however, can be broken down with help of water and microorganisms, turning it into CO2 and water. The catch in the matter? Not all bioplastics are biodegradable, and often they need just the right temperature and conditions to break down. So throwing them on a dump site or sticking them in the ground is not the best option. Okay, it's now time for our experiment to see if we can make bioplastic. And actually all the ingredients that we're gonna need, you can find at home. Starting with some cornstarch. We'll also need some good old water. We'll also be needing some glycerin. I don't know about you guys, but here in Kenya, you can just get it in any beauty store. And we'll also need some vinegar. And last but not least, if you wanna have some fun with it, then have some food color, some food dye. So now we start measuring out our ingredients. We need two tablespoons of cornstarch. One, two, boom, easy. Eight tablespoons of water. We need two teaspoons of glycerin and two tablespoons of vinegar. And finally, some food color for fun and whisk. You want to keep stirring this over a medium heat and what's going to happen is that the heat and the vinegar is going to dissolve the starch and eventually what you want to see is a gooey mixture. Cornstarch is primarily composed of polysaccharides, long chains of glucose molecules. When cornstarch is mixed with water and heated, water molecules penetrate the granules, causing them to swell and eventually burst forming a viscous gel. Glycerol inserts itself between starch polymer chains. This allows the starch molecules to slide past each other, giving the bioplastic flexibility instead of brittleness. So the next part is literally just smearing it and shaping it into whatever you want. But if you want to be more creative, you can put it in a bowl or a cup and it will take the shape of whatever container you put it in. You take it outside to dry and leave it for 24 hours. Luckily, we have a lot of sun here, so I'm sure it's gonna dry. Okay, so in the real world, you want to do this after 24 hours, but because this is television, YouTube, you know how we do, we had this made 24 hours ago and it's ready. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Wow, it actually looks and feels like plastic. But how well does this plastic actually work? So we want to test that. We want to test the permeability. I don't know if you remember that from science school. Remember testing the membrane? And we'll basically just put our nice plastic over this nice container. Use a nice rubber band to hold it in place and pour some water over it and see if it actually is waterproof. Fingers crossed. 
Oh, it's working. All right, so I had a lot of fun, but what did we learn today, right? We had three things that I had to do. Make my own bioplastic. I think we can say that I've successfully done that. Take. How does it compare to regular plastics? Well, we know that it's very, very easy to make and the production process is not quite as harmful to the environment as regular plastic. Overall, is it better for the environment? Well, the jury is actually still out on that because while it is bioplastic, it doesn't mean that it's fully green. There's still question marks about what happens to sea life and other living creatures once this stuff is in the environment. There's also considerations to be made for food security. Do you want to spend all those potatoes and starchy items making plastic rather than eating? Well, I don't know what you think, but I'll be happy to hear from you and tell us if you try to do this experiment. Do you have any other things you want us to test out? Let us know and we'll be here to do it for you. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.